Hey guys, just wanted to come on here a little bit, hopefully bring a little, some kind of encouragement to someone. Today I'm just going to kind of be talking about this evil and seducing generation. We've got deception upon deception, guys. Then I'm going to mention the cloud of witnesses and, and how our crown awaits. Guys, these are the days to be looking up because we are going home. You know, before I start, though, I just want to mention uh, in the book of Luke, the sixth chapter, verses 12 and 13, it said, In these days he went out to the mountain to pray, and all night he continued in prayer to God. And when day came, he called his disciples and chose from them twelve, whom he named apostles. Guys, our Lord was a praying man. And that's exactly what he wants us to be. He wants us to be praying men and women of God. Amen. Jesus prayed all night, but then he chose his disciples. Well, that's what we need to be doing in these last seconds of these last days, guys. Stay in the attitude of prayer. You know, in these days, we have to pray literally for wisdom. In the letter uh, of James, the Lord's brother, he writes, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally. You can read that in James 1.5. You know, the context for this, for this request is trials. Since this is a time of almost constant trials, God, knows we need his wisdom more than ever, guys. Trial after trial after trial. You know, as a minister and a watchman, you know, sometimes people might ask uh, what I expect to happen, you know, what is my advice for it? Well, guys, stay in prayer, stay in the Word of God, and, and believe that we're out of here soon. But I could say one thing for sure, the world situation is extremely volatile. It's volatile, guys, with shifting paradigms, and we absolutely must get God's individual and personal wisdom to navigate through these last days. Guys, make sure you are seeking the Lord for wisdom in these last days to be led of His Spirit, especially when decisions are before you. Rely on his promise to grant you wisdom generously as he will to all that ask. Guys, perhaps in the past we've made bad decisions because we neglected to seek him in prayer. Maybe we didn't ask and thus failed to receive his wisdom. But this time, guys, and every time from now on, let's follow the Lord's example and let's be men and women of prayer. But guys, I just want to talk about this evil and seducing generation. You know, deception has consumed the whole world. And that's a profound indicator of where this generation stands on God's prophetic timeline. Jesus pointed to this ingredient as a specific signal Believers are to be aware of when all other signals of his return to earth are in view. In Matthew 24, verses 3 and 4, it says, And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. You know, Paul the Apostle spoke of this same ingredient that would permeate the general time frame, time frame of Christ's return. Uh, <clears throat> in 2 Timothy 3.13 it says, But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Guys, The spirit of this wicked age drips with the satanic venom of deception. 
It is the same venom injected into mankind into in the Garden of Eden when the serpent seduced Eve, then caused Adam to believe the lie that he and Eve could be like God. Guys, today's, the spirit of this age flows uh, the same toxic Luciferian evil. Guys, evil men and seducers, as anyone with the desire to know truth can attest, assault our eyes and ears every waking moment. Our culture is saturated with deceit at every level. The lies have become so blatant that they've numbed our senses as a generation in many cases. For example, many can now be told and believe in uh, th that a man can become a woman, a girl can become a boy, men can become pregnant, and it's no longer wrong for adults to engage in sexual acts with children. And there is less and less pushback to such monstrous, upside-down, evil thinking. The deception infects the very souls of mankind with a lie like the one the serpent whispered to Eve. Yeah, hath God said. Satan thus is during this time so near the end of this age, blatantly through the woke insanity of his human minions, telling all who will listen that God's order of creation is all wrong. Mankind can be his own God. He and she, if they, if those are the pronouns they choose, could be other than the gender in which they were born. They're saying God is wrong. People can do what is right in their own eyes. Guys, we are lied to at every juncture by the government that was once said by Abraham Lincoln and the Constitution to be the govern government of, by, and for the people. In politics and through bureaucratic manipulations, the reprobate mindset of Romans 1.28 is observably in full bloom. Guys, big-time spending has in effect, bankrupted the U.S. Uh, once officials are elected to office, those who find themselves in charge of the tax dollars of the American people too often embrace the lobbying minions and their desire to increase their wealth and influence rather than tend to the fiscal responsibility they owe the voters who put them in office. They, as is said, feather their own nest by selling their influence. Guys, as a result, over the years, we've come to a national debt that can never be resolved. And now it appears that the wicked leadership of the nation and of the entire world that America's dollar base influences is intent on going to a digital form of currency in order to somehow reset the economic fiasco they've created through electronic manipulation. This is actually deception by the father of lies. Satan, through his reprobate, though evil, genius, is maneuvering his human governing minions to set the stage by instituting electronic funds in the digital way of doing business for the Antichrist system of buying and selling through the 666 numbers and marks a model of Revelation 13, verses 16 through 18. Guys, evil men and seducers are ramping up efforts to bring America down so the global order they want to build, which is the new world order, can proceed. The deception to get that process underway in earnest, I believe, can be understood through the so-called pandemic America and the world just endured. More and more it all looks to be a great lie that uh, by the father of lies designed to bring about Satan's coming man of sin and his regime of tyranny and the tribulation. Guys, the Antichrist will soon appear before this lost and dying world, and that'll be after the rapture of the church. Guys, the seven-year tribulation is on the very cusp of engulfing this world of rebels against the God of heaven. For we who are believers in the Lord 
Jesus Christ. The rapture can, and we believe will, very soon take all of us out of harm's way to be with the Lord forever, guys. Glory to God. Glory to God. You know, when we get to heaven, we're going to stand before the Bema platform of Christ, and he's going to hand out rewards. He's got a, it's like this, our crown awaits. You know, uh, in Hebrews 12, 1 and 2, it says, Wherefore, saying we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Guys, it was in 490 B.C. The Athenians won a crucial and decisive battle over the forces of King Darius I of Persia. It was on a plain near the Greek coastal town of Marathon. Upon delivering the important message of their victory, the Greek soldier who came to tell the good news died. He had completed the 26-mile course running and bearing good news and did it totally unreserved until the moment he died. Today, marathons are run all over the world commemorating that very event, event 2,500 years ago. Guys, I've never run a marathon, but anyone who has run a marathon can certainly tell you how difficult the race is. No matter how good you are, how well trained, how prepared, there are times in the race you just want to quit. But those who persevere till the end receive a prize. Back in King Darius' day, one would win only a crown made of laurel leaves. Today, athletes compete for trophies and medals. But in God's race, we win something far more precious. And that is a crown that is incorruptible. Guys, I know you are tired. You're overworked, overstressed, overwhelmed. You are done. So many of us feel as though we are done. But guys, and I'm preaching to myself, let's be encouraged. Just when we think we can't run any further, we can. And I'm preaching, come on, press through, and press on for the great prize. God is with us, strengthening our feeble knees and moving us in the right direction. Guys, stay in the race because the finish line is in sight and we cross over soon. We're getting ready to cross over into eternity, guys. We're going to get new glorified bodies. Man, the trumpet of God's going to sound and the dead in Christ are going to rise. Those of us that are alive and remain will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. We'll be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. Guys, that twinkling of an eye I call uh, being the speed of thought. At the speed of thought, whoo, we're going to be changed. We're going to be changed. Glory to God. Glory to God. Man, I tell you what, this old body I'm packing around just ain't like what it was many years ago, and I'm ready for that new glorified body. Man, guys. But you know what? Here is how to be a part of that glorious moment. We can read about that from Romans 10, verses 9 and 10. that says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Guys, today is the day for salvation. Don't wait until tomorrow. 
We may not have tomorrow. I may not be alive five minutes from now. Guys, <laughs> you know, I, I, I always thought my Susie would be right here with me until the rapture came, and, and here she is not now. Guys, none of us have tomorrow. Please call on the name of Jesus today. I have a heart for lost souls. I have a heart for lost souls. I, I know how much Jesus loves you because I know how much he loves me. Guys, go out and tell somebody about Jesus today because we may be flying tomorrow. You don't know. Well, guys, I just wanted to get on here and I hopefully bring a word of encouragement and just to let you know that the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is on his way and we fly soon. Much love to you all. God bless you all and Maranatha.
guys, we can talk a little bit about the gospel that's found in 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4. Verse 1 says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I have delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. Verse 4 says, And that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Amen. Guys, those are shouting words. Yes, they are. I'm just going to turn it over to Susie and let her present the ABCs of salvation. Hallelujah. And how many know that salvation is as easy as ABC? Yes, it is. The ABCs of salvation. A, admit that you are a sinner in need of a Savior. This is where the godly sorrow leads to genuine repentance for sinning against the righteous God. And there is a change of heart. We change our mind and God changes our hearts and regenerates us from the inside out. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins and was buried and that God raised Jesus from the dead. This is trusting with all your heart that Jesus Christ is who he said he is. Call upon the name of the Lord. In Romans 10, 9, it says, If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and will believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Every single person who has ever lived since Adam will bend their knee and confess with their mouth that Jesus Christ is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. If you want to become born again today, then say something like this, Lord, you said in your word that if I confess with my mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead, that I would be saved. I confess now that Jesus is my Lord And I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. For it is with my heart I believe and am justified. And it is with my mouth that I confess and am saved. As the scripture says, anyone who trusts in you will never be put to shame. You said that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me and cleansing me and forgiving all my sins, past, present, and future, and forgiving me eternal life. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. If you have prayed this prayer, you are now a child of God. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Welcome to the family of God. Amen and amen.